Hello everyone, and welcome to our first video here at Simulated Aviation. I'm Tim, and today I'll be walking you through the first steps to take when you open Microsoft Flight Simulator for the first time. Let's jump right into it. First, we'll be giving you a quick overview of the menu screens available to you, starting with the welcome screen. The welcome screen is your main screen to get you in the pit and to get you into the virtual skies. Here, you can take a look at the world map and start your flight to anywhere in the world. Live events. On release, we have this beautiful Kurtzlevel landing challenge. Check back here regularly for new live events and to try your hand at getting it to the top of the leaderboards. Flight training. Here, you can learn the basics of flight utilizing the Cessna 152. Included here is everything from basic controls, landing patterns, and even taking to the skies for your first solo flight. Within the activities area, you can find bush trips and landing challenges. More activities will be added as the simulator develops. Next, we'll add to your profile. Here you can access your logbook, personal challenges, achievements, and any badges you may have earned. You can also access your hangar, where you'll find a beautiful showcase view of every aircraft you own. Within this area is the content manager as well. Here you can see what add-ons you have installed. From aircraft to airports, you can find it here. If you want to remove certain add-ons, you can also do so from this section. The next menu area we have is the marketplace. Here you can browse third-party add-ons and upgrade to the deluxe and premium deluxe versions of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Check back here as more aircraft and airports develop. And last but not least, in fact, one of the most important menus to look at is your options menu. We won't be going over every single option in this video, but we will take a look at some key settings you'll be wanting to turn on and options you'll want to configure to your liking. Most of your personal preferences would have been set the first time you launched the sim on the initial configuration screens. We'll be starting with the assistant options as these settings will affect your final experience while flying around the world. Under piloting, we can find assisted controls such as rudder assistance and assisted landings and takeoffs. Once again, most of these will be set to your liking, so make sure you select the options you see fit. If you're new to aviation, you may want to start with all these settings turned on and turn them off as you progress. Under aircraft systems, we'll find options such as unlimited fuel, automatic aircraft flights, and an auto mixture control. Under failure damage, we'll find anything that will break your aircraft. Things like overspeeding or colliding into a tree will affect this. I currently have them all disabled, but feel free to enable these as you get more comfortable with the simulator. Navigation aids are fantastic when trying to navigate around the world. You can turn these on or off to increase or decrease your realism within the simulator. We like to make sure the point of interest or the POI markers are enabled. This is a great tool when looking for airports or scenic locations to fly through. The taxi ribbon is also helpful for larger airports that might be overwhelming with the abundance of taxiways and runways. Under notifications, these are any of the pop-up messages on your screen mid-flight. These pop-up notifications include things like flying tips, software tips, as well as your aircraft systems for if anything goes wrong. Under user experience, you can enable or disable certain menus that automatically open when you enter the sim. You can also turn on or off the ATC voices. It's good to note that this will not disable the ATC menu in-game. Moving to general options, the first tab we have is graphics. Most of this depends on your computer and what's under the hood. However, we did find that turning on TAA for the anti-aliasing option can help improve frames across the board. Under camera, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we have the option to turn on the instrument HUD or heads-up display. This is all of the information you can see about your aircraft on the chase camera. If you want to take clean screenshots or not be bothered with all your flight information, you can turn this off to make for a cleaner experience. Under traffic, in order to see other users in the Microsoft Flight Simulator world, you want to make sure show nameplates is enabled. In this menu, you can decrease the amount of AI aircraft, vehicles, and ground crew if you're struggling with FPS as well. 
To ensure you'll be able to fly with friends and take advantage of the live weather and live air traffic, you want to make sure all of these settings are enabled. Heading over to the flight model area, we have two modes, Legacy and Modern. If you find that you're fighting the aircraft to stay in the air, consider switching to the Modern flight model to make for an easier flight experience. And the final thing to note within the general settings is the developer mode. Turn this on to access additional settings like your FPS values. Now setting up your controls. This will all depend on what type of flight control system you have. I personally use the Thrustmaster T16000 and the Satec X52 throttle, but there are a few options that will help you set up your flight control system. When searching for something to assign to your controls, make sure that under filter, you have it set to all. As by default, Microsoft Flight Simulator will only show your pre-assigned controls, and if you're struggling to find what you're looking for, we can search for it above. Basic controls you'll want to assign are your pitch, roll, and yaw. You can change the sensitivity of these controls by clicking on sensitivity. We have set up our flight controls to have a sensitivity of 25. The dead zone will depend on how new or old your stick is and how much you've used it. Adjust the dead zone so that there's no movement from your controls when your stick is centered, as some sticks may experience a little wiggle room. You'll also want to make sure you have your elevator and aileron trim set up as the weather can be unforgiving at times. Some key shortcuts to point out are as follows. Pushback is left shift P. Internal and external camera switch is end. To access slew mode, press Y. To sit higher in the pit, hit your spacebar. To move the camera around by default with the mouse, hold the right mouse button and drag your mouse around. And to auto start the aircraft, left control E. Once you have all of your settings configured, you're ready to take off to the virtual skies of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Simply go to the world map, find an airport of your liking, click on the airport, and set it as departure. On the top left, we can select which aircraft we'd like to fly. And on the top right, we can select our weather settings and what type of traffic we can see within Microsoft Flight Simulator. The live players option will show only other players that have the live players option enabled. All players will show anyone that is flying on your server region, including live flights in the real world. By clicking on preset for weather and time, we are able to select what type of weather we want to see and at what time of day. Finally, if you would like to pre-program a flight plan, you may select an airport you want to land at and set it as the arrival. Now that you've got your flight set up, click fly and begin your adventure.